hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel and we're into another episode of candy and the gang gang candy and the gang candy and the gang gang yes we're here with season one episode three it's called rowdy employees and uptight managers i'm like whoa ho 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 i was for it tonight i couldn't do it for y'all last night because i had a headache after watching this show but child when i got home from work i said let me do what i gotta do give me a little exercise in and get to talking about this show i was like come through candy burris tucker come through she finally checked that ninja right there he was trying to tell her how to handle things but he told her when her and Todd hired him that he can get people in line and he can get them straight and she wanted him to use those skills that he had definitely used that old um the blaze steak and seafood but them prob them people were probably upscale anyway he probably didn't have to do a lot of changing and rearranging of the staff over there but he had his hands full over here with this this rowdy bunch and i'm like hey you pay for what you get you get for what you pay all right it just is what it is and at the time i don't think nobody was really talking to the staff about appearing on the show or appearing on a sitcom show that her and Todd were trying to get together and present it to bravo as an ideal show um <laughs> i was like oh my god i was just so glad that um candy got into his arse okay because i'm like uh-uh this man's just too unprofessional i don't care i've been reading in my comments and people getting on me to buy no nah, that's what they need they need to be you know uh handled and all this that and the third and they had went through so many managers he'll be the one that you know straighten them up I'm like no nah, he'll be the one that would definitely have everybody out there and him and todd and candy and don Juan be sitting up there running the place okay <laughs> because fooling with philip and his tight ass child please even don Juan had to get in his behind he said the one wait a minute now you getting in too many arguments and fuss fights around here the only common denominator that i see that keep popping up is you he said, you a little bit too harsh. You a little bit too strict. And th th I was like, get in his ass, Don Juan. I'm like, TKO. Now we just need Todd to come in there and bring it all the way home. Because to me, Todd should have been handling uh, Mr. Uptight, Mr. Unfriendly, Mr. I'm going to get everybody together because they're not on my level. And he don't pay anybody to think. I'm like, you don't pay nobody, Philip. You are hired hand as rest as the other people there. You do what Candy and Todd and Don Juan tell you to do. Okay? You do what they tell you to do. So you are a hired hand as well, my friend. Okay? You are a hired hand, my friend. But then we move over to those two cute couples. And I'm just like, uh, M Mama Joyce, <laughs> romance do not belong and the finance of running a business nope 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 these two gotta go <sighs> dominique cute as she can be but she don't ever come to work on time because she put her profession her dancing before anything else that's a problem okay philip you should be looking to fire her okay tell her when she's done doing whatever she's supposed to be doing we can hire her seasonal but she needs to go on and cultivate what she really feels important in her life and that's dancing as far as brandon i don't know what we need to kick him to because he's just a hot straight up mess he is like do he'll kind of like philip do what i tell you to do don't do what i do though you know i'm like no 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 that's not good leadership skilling skills okay we need you to be on point every time we see you we need you to be doing managerial work and this man right here i'm like y'all need to get him an office because, Candy, that's just piss poor. We can't be sitting out here letting the customers hear us fight and roar and, and you know, scream at our 
top of our lungs trying to get people together in the organization baby you need an office i have i'm like this is totally i'm like where where can we just write up everybody including don juan because he knows for a fact hr is behind closed doors management is behind closed doors getting people together is behind closed doors okay it doesn't take but a, you know a, so many feet so many whatever and, and have walls with a door have three seats in now so we we need to come together and get somebody straightened out get to signing some papers this that and the third you know in support everybody was in subordination i mean even phil was in subordination to don juan when don juan was trying to tell him he was wrong and he stormed out on don juan I went, oh. and then guess what we're gonna get her the honorable mention philip gave Shandrika a compliment that she was doing what she was doing and she was taking accountability and I'm like no she snitched on somebody is what she did and she just went on and did their work for them which I'm like okay a snitch a snitch snitches get stitches but hey and over there in the can and the guy I don't know what's going on because some of these folks I didn't even see them like uh what were they doing and then when did uh Brandon and Dominique make their relationship public. Maybe it's coming on further on into the episodes. Because Candy, I think she said they're supposed to get 10 episodes for this first season. But I'm like, okay, everything is pretty kosher. Everything is pretty reenacted how any job would be in a restaurant business besides the reprimanding. Okay, when you reprimand somebody, reprim- reprimand them down to the ground, you know what I'm saying? You write no folks, this, that, third. It's behind closed doors. It ain't, you know, I don't understand what's going on. Where is our doors? Okay. Oh, I mean, Don Juan need to be rolled up. Cannon need to be rolled up. You ain't going to mention Toa. Uh, the GM manager, and that's too much of a big title for him. He needs to be the manager, and Brandon need to be the lead. Okay. Philip need to be the manager, and um brandon needs to be the lead all right but it is what it is we're gonna go on into that first um episode where the first scene they was giving us the first part Torin got into it with philip i was like oh lord and Torin was tearing his behind up i was here for it i said come through Torin, come through with the come through oh yes and park it there for a minute Park the car while you roll over him back and forth, back and forth. When he still look like he want to say some shit, just go over him one more time. Okay, one more time. Child, I was like, Torian could read him like a book and then put it down. <laughs> okay, and contemplate what he just read and then have to thumb through it to see where the good parts was again so he can explain it to somebody else. I said, come through, Torian. And the only thing Philip can threaten, because he, he can't read people. He's just condescending, crass, and, you know, tell folk they, he don't pay them the thing. I'm like, you don't pay nobody to do nothing. They're coming out of Candace and Todd's bank account. They ain't coming out your bank account, and they need to get a refund with you, brother. But anyway. Then Philip calls Torian a big bird when he going over there to tell Don Juan about the the situation he had with Torian. I said, now y'all call him a GM. Did y'all just hire this man to be y'all GM? And he's sitting up there calling somebody a big bird. How unprofessional. Oh, how dressful. And then he going to sit up there dressed to the nines. And his confessional thinking he got it going on. And he totally looking like a total asshole. A jerk. I'm like, oh, I can't take it. I could not take it. I said, Big Bird. I said, well, damn, you earn it then. Well, you, you earn it. If you're Big Bird, then you earn it. Or the Cookie Monster. Which one? Which one? Oh, you could be the Count. Count Dracula. Hell, that's, that's befitting for you. You the Count. All right? Since you want to be all up there and everybody have to say this, that, and the third of you bow down. You know, you could be Count Dracula, uh, Philip. That would be your title, Count Dracula. But anyway, you wouldn't be the, M- the GM. You would be Count Dracula. That would be my, my unprofessional thing for you if I were there. Child, please. But that, that was too unprofessional. Calling one of your subordinates, one of your employees a name. You definitely don't call somebody out their name. I mean, this is not a comedy show. This is like how people really get down in their jobs sometimes. Okay? But I'm like, 
I ain't never heard the manager call somebody out their name, though. You know what I'm saying? If they did, it was a cuss word or something like that. But it wasn't no damn Sesame Street character, okay? Damn, that's a bad thing for Big Bird. But anyway, then Candy goes and talks to Tori, and Tori is like, Oh, we got to do something about this man because he crazy. I mean, I came back because you wanted me back. It was a mutual understanding between us two and Don Juan, okay? Because I didn't pick up the phone. Y'all called me. And, and I was like, uh -huh, tell him again. Tell all of them again because evidently they don't got the, flip, the script flipped. They came looking for you. You didn't come looking for them, all right? Y'all both needed each other. Some things need to happen. You could provide. And it was a lovely transaction then and now so y'all need to get y'all boy under control and you know Philip just lost it he said i don't know what kind of people y'all got over him but the same people who you come out those people you are those people okay you are those people because guess what candy got in your ass to let you know who were you talking to i like get him get him candy get him girl get him, take, make him and he Candy got finished with him. Looked like he wanted to cry. And I said, Don't want you should have came in and closed the deal and said, You're fired. <laughs> but see what it is, they don't want to fire him because it would be just the same old thing that has been going on and on and on with the other managers that they were supposedly had had. And Phillip's supposed to be the one to straighten things out. And maybe when things are shed it down, they don't shed him down a few notches or cut him down a few notches. Maybe he can just realize that he is a human being and those are human beings that he's dealing with. And since they had to get him straight, maybe he had second thoughts when he was sitting out in his car. But he was still talking shit on that camera. And I was like... Ooh, when they play it back, when they play it back, I'll be like, write him up, write him up. He don't want to sign. I'll be like, boy, go somewhere. Okay, but knowing him, he would come back in soup candy. <laughs> he would come back in soup candy for a breach of contract, for showing him in an unpleasant light while they were taping this, that, and the third. I just see his behind. I'm like, child, let him go back to New York. Where is Felipe? Where is Felipe? His boyfriend. Because he is getting out of touch with reality. So then we go finish with that. Candy finally checks Philip uh, about, you know, his job description and what he said he could do and all this, that, and the third. And Candy just say, do it. Don't ask me. Don't come to me telling me I hired you to do a job. And right now, why are all the people coming to me? Why are all the people coming to Don Juan? They should be coming to you. You're handling it. And don't always use the fire technique. We, no, we're not firing anybody. We want you to cultivate them. We want them want you to mold them into the employees we want them to be. And that's where Todd and Candy was coming through. But I'm like, let Todd go handle them folks, okay? But fire cannot come out of his mouth either. Because if you can train somebody to get them to do what you want them to do without force or intimidation, then you a good ass leader. You see what I'm saying? And right now uh, Philip is failing miserably because nobody likes him. Hey, Aunt Bertha, you know me and Aunt Bertha up there like one, two, three, A, B, C. She said, I don't like them. <laughs> she said, I can't stand them. And Aunt Bertha is golden. Okay, whatever she say, believe me, she don't thought about it. She don't observe. And she coming with the come through. Now, Joyce. And nor they say they like Philip. I'm like, not till he got it. Unless he said something nasty to you all, you are going to like him. Okay? You are going to like him. But Aunt Bertha be coming with the truth. She be coming with the T. And I'll be like, go ahead, girl. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Candy and Aunt Bertha came through with a little bit dumb one, smashing it, you know, in, you know, making the hoop in the basket. Okay? I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Then we go to um, Torn is trying to tell Patrick. I ain't want to even put them in there because it was a boring ass scene. Uh, Patrick's going too far. He acting like a woman really trying to decorate an apartment that's supposed to be him and his brother cousin Melvin. Ain't gay Melvin no, you know, this, that, and the third. No heads up or anything. He's just going around making plans and this, that, and the third. Then that Joker go over there and, and visit his girlfriend Safari. And she's just a little bit too much herself. I'm like, girl, keep your business intact. Keep doing you. But don't sit up there and boss no man. Because then you got a boy. You got a baby. You ain't got a man. Okay? And Patrick is just like, he's whooped. He's whooped. He's whooped. He's whooped. 
and he just needs to sit his ass down somewhere pretty much he don't need to be dating nobody with them antics unless like i said uh miss safari is taking care of him financially then i guess you would because there's some women out there candy that take care of men okay just want them to be pretty wanting them to be fine nice and whatever uh, because i'm like what is uh what is a parking lot attendant is that a real job is that a real job y'all that's something candy just made up okay because that's something like the valet people do you know not that not no manager but anyway that's what he does he works for candy and uh he's a parking attendant and safari has her own business and stuff like that so i guess she and i'm just saying guessing maybe she can't handle a man on her same level or more so she has to go dig down okay because he is below her in a sense and i'm pretty sure she has made him believe that he is down he's he, you know he ain't on her level so she's gonna get a baby she's gonna take care of that baby and that's the, what it is because that's patrick because patrick tried to call himself inviting his ex-girlfriend or lover or whatever they were sandrica uh and now she wanted him to uninvite Shandrika. I'm like, how stupid are you? If she can't understand that that was your past and she is your present, you don't need to be with her. You don't need to be with her, Patrick, but then you so far stuck up her behind, you can't even breathe. You don't suffocate it in her. So we're just going to leave you there stuck up her ass and you can't breathe. All right. So, um, I didn't really like Shand uh, I mean, I really didn't like Safari, how she was coming out. She was too aggressive, too domineering, and too much of do as i say not as i do okay T type of mentality i like her and um philip would get hit it off real good if he was heterosexual but since we know he's gay that's not gonna fit but that attitude that um safari had and the attitude that philip had who they could go together i don't know if they'll make a powerful couple but they'll like they'll probably make a whole lot of enemies you know what i'm saying i'm just saying it. i'm just saying it okay and then we go to um Philip tries to get on Brandon, you know, and Brandon's not hearing it. He's being wise, cracking up, you know, just <laughs> really just being him, his fun-loving self. And, you know, he ain't taking no, no hits without pu pulling little punches himself. You know what I'm saying? So I was there for that, too. I was. Brandon had a story to tell. He to told it very lovingly. And it was like a PSA, public service announcement. Um, announcement, please don't mess with drugs. They, they'll do you in every time and so he is a survivor uh and i'm glad to see him on this side of the earth rather than pushing up daisies on the other side of reality that we don't know about okay so um that was a, a very good scene that they were doing i don't know if candy wanted to put it out like that or it just happened organically but she did do something on, on her platform youtube platform called speak on it she was interviewing brian and you know giving us another side of the other story that he didn't really get a chance to tell because they you know have so many uh moments you can put into a sitcom or episode and you can't really touch on what you really want to touch on so that was nicely done but i want to see what uh brian had to say about drugs and how they messed him up during the covid season because he was just messed up mentally he was at a bad place uh he talks about his survival and he's surviving every day he's taking it one day at a time that was a good look i liked it that that was a teachable moment uh, let's see then we move on from there uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. but anyway basically him and Brian get into it Philip and Brian Don Juan witness it all he didn't too much like how Brian I mean uh, Brian had came off on him so he took him outside you know gave him a little uh, chin up here chin up down there you know just hitting him and then bring him back to reality that he really can't talk any kind of way to somebody that's over him and he really shouldn't be explaining that to a 30 something years old person but it just is what it is okay then we have um well uh, which what's his name um philip suspends brian for a day or something i believe don juan approves it but then he comes back and getting philip's ass and um you know it just is what it is and I, I like the fact that he got uh, plowed down by Candy and Don Juan. And we we know Todd, Tiny Todd, uh, Tiny Todd is not going to do anything. Okay. Uh, let me see. Let me see. We talked about that. Okay, we talked about that. 
Okay, we don't even want to talk about Patrick and him going to get some lipo suction things. He was just a, a pure punk. And I say that in a way, meaning he just let a woman run over him, period. Uh, and he just, I don't know. I don't know what Patrick is. Patrick knows he's cute. And he's hes cute. He ain't gorgeous. But he's cute. Now, now, uh, Philip, uh, boyfriend, now that's gorgeous, okay? And he's not he's non threatening, he's uh he's not arrogant or anything. He's just, just like a, a tall drink of water, okay? A tall drink of water, really nice, really nice looking. Like only if he was heterosexual. Only if he was heterosexual, okay? But anyway. Um I did say on Bertha tells it like it is. She don't like Philip and I was good. I was like, damn right. Uh on Bertha. We 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 see it here to here. We see eye to eye on that. So that's not gonna change. Um, let me see, Tori and Brian meet up, okay, and, and towards the end, Tori and Brian meet up at an ice, at ice cream parlor shop, and, uh, Tori is telling Brian, don't ever get in a situation anymore where he feels like he's on the outside, looking in, uh, he's there for him, and, um, he's sorry that he felt that way, and he's sorry that he went through all the traumatic things he did during that COVID session that they were in at the time where the restaurant, I think Candace said they had closed for like two months. And Brian was really going through a lot of different things, dealing with the uh, drugs and, you know, seeing things hallucinating and hearing things that weren't there because he was mixing the drugs with the um, uh, alcohol and it was just a bad, bad situation. And I don't forgot something about he had called. He was calling people and they wouldn't talk to him or whatever. But Don Juan had got a chance uh, to talk with him. He, you know, uh, Don Juan had picked up when he was calling around trying to talk to Ian and everybody. And, you know, pretty much he like Don Juan saved his life. And as uh, far as answering that phone call because he was like really at his wits end. And uh, that was nice for him to uh, give kudos to uh, Candy as well as uh, Don Juan. For being uh, a part of his life at the time that he really needed them, so that was good. I, it was I ain't gonna say it was boring. It was interesting because the PSA that Brian was giving on his life about don't do drugs and don't do you abuse alcohol was a good uh, pu public service announcement bullet point. I liked it that. I liked it the way Don Juan and Candy checked Philip. You know, because he thinks he needs to have an ideal. Um, staff or he or the ideal individual that works under him and that's not going to happen you know these these people are young adults you know what I'm saying and this new generation of, of uh, individuals they, they don't stay on no job long if you get on their nerves or they feel they can do better they take those options and they run with it they'll leave you high and dry so <laughs> I'm like to me employees got the uh, run of the meal now they can pick and choose whatever profession they want to stay in and they don't give it a, a whole year to five years to ten years nah, they don't do that no more not this new breed uh-uh they try to get whatever they can real quick quick fast and a hurry and then they bounce into the next profession so uh, <laughs> i'm like fill up fill up fill up Philip, I'm like, I, we don't really need to see Philip no more. I'm tired of seeing him. I want to see the other cast members. I'm kind of seeing, I'm tired of them too, too, because they got a romance and it ain't nothing going on that we can learn from that. Which, if they get to fight, you know, verbally and they don't want to see each other, they're going to be tearing up Candace's restaurant, okay? And we throwing dishes, knives, for everything. I can see Dominique doing that when she gets mad or whatever. But uh, hell, it might be the other way around. Brandon might go up there and start tanning or stuff because Dominique don't want to be with him no more. And that's the uh, days of our lives in Atlanta, Georgia on Candy and the Gang, y'all. Season 1, Episode 3, Rowdy Employees and Uptight Managers. Okay? And I guess we're going to have an uptight manager throughout these whole season 1 because he's a hot man. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all can say he, that's what the gang need now because he's going to have everybody fired. And, and, or they're going to walk off themselves and what's going to happen. But um, Brian had talked about uh, him in a good way because they you know the tape is already over with i think this was in the summertime this was going on so they probably have a new i uh viewpoints or perspectives of each other you know maybe philip learned something uh doing that I, I don't know if he really did or not but um black and love gotta have more 
Okay, like I said, it wasn't all that, but I was feeling this episode because Candy was getting on Philip and Don Juan was giving her the cake to slice his ass up. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. But that's all I have for this particular video, guys. Uh, and make sure you um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. And um, uh, what do you call it? Share and like my videos. All right. And I will see y'all next time. Bye.